Have you ever wondered what it would be like to be flying through the sky, only to look up and see nothing but open air above you? In 1988, 94 people on Aloha Airlines Flight 243 found themselves living through that very nightmare, a terrifying event that would not only test their will to survive, but also change aviation safety standards forever. It all started like any other flight. April 28, 1988 was a typical sunny day in Hawaii. The islands were buzzing with tourists, and Flight 243, scheduled for a short 35-minute trip from Hilo to Honolulu, was a routine one for both passengers and crew. Aloha Airlines, known for connecting the Hawaiian islands, often ran multiple short trips a day, and that plane had already made eight flights since the morning. For most passengers, it was just another part of their holiday, and the last thing on their minds was that something could go wrong. But before boarding the plane, one passenger noticed something strange, a small crack in a fuselage near the door. She didn't think much of it. After all, it was a well-known airline, and planes were inspected regularly, right? But it would only take a few minutes in the air for that crack to reveal itself as a ticking time bomb. Flight 243 took off at 1.25 p.m., and everything seemed perfectly normal. Passengers settled in, and the flight attendants began to prepare for their routine service. But just 20 minutes into the flight, as the plane reached its cruising altitude of 24,000 feet, disaster struck. Without warning, a deafening explosion tore through the aircraft, and in an instant, 35 square meters of the plane's fuselage, the roof and part of the walls, disintegrated, leaving the cabin exposed to the open sky. Passengers were thrown into chaos. There was a sudden rush of cold air, nearly minus 45 degrees Celsius, and winds howling at 500 kilometers per hour blasted through the cabin. Loose items flew everywhere and breathing became almost impossible as the pressurized cabin lost all stability. The oxygen masks that were supposed to drop during emergencies were destroyed along with the roof, leaving the passengers without any air supply at 24,000 feet, where the atmosphere was too thin to breathe. For a brief, terrifying moment, it seemed like all hope was lost. People were getting dizzy from the lack of oxygen and unconsciousness from hypoxia. Where the body doesn't get enough oxygen was only moments away. Yet in the midst of this chaos, one flight attendant, Michelle Honda, held on to her wits. Despite the howling wind and debris, she made her way to the cockpit, fearing the worst, that the pilots were incapacitated. Crawling along the floor to avoid being swept away, she found the cockpit blocked by debris. But incredibly, the pilots were still alive, oxygen masks securely in place. In the cockpit, Captain Robert Skornsteimer and First Officer Mimi Tompkins were just as shocked by the explosion. They turned around to find the roof of the plane missing and the cabin exposed to the sky, but they quickly jumped into action. Realizing the severity of the situation, they initiated an emergency descent, rapidly lowering the plane from 24,000 feet to a safer altitude where the passengers could breathe. Descending at a speed of 4,100 feet per minute, they aimed to bring the plane to a height below 10,000 feet as quickly as possible. But their problems didn't end there. As they descended, they realized the structural integrity of the plane was compromised. The front of the aircraft, including the cockpit, had drooped slightly, held together by only the floor of the plane. If they kept flying for too long, the plane could easily break apart in midair. On top of that, the left engine failed, further complicating the situation. With only minutes to act, the pilots contacted air traffic control and were instructed to land at Maui, which was closer than Honolulu. The runway in Maui was prepared with emergency services, firefighters and ambulances, all ready for what seemed like an inevitable disaster. 
and as if the situation wasn't dire enough, as they descended toward Maui, they had to navigate around a 10,000-foot mountain. Captain Skornsteimer slowed the plane to 170 knots, the slowest speed possible without losing control, and miraculously steered clear of the mountain. Approaching the runway, the pilots attempted to lower the landing gear. While the main gear deployed, the nose gear didn't release at first. Without it, landing the plane would have been nearly impossible. The force of the landing could have split the weakened fuselage, possibly igniting a fuel tank explosion. But just before they reached the runway, the nose gear finally deployed, giving them a chance to land the plane safely. After a harrowing 13 minutes and 42 seconds following the explosion, Flight 243 touched down on the runway in Maui at 1.58 p.m. Emergency crews were already on standby, ready to douse the plane in foam in case of fire. But the plane came to a stop safely, and all 94 passengers and crew members were able to evacuate. Astonishingly, despite the severity of the situation, all but one person survived. The only fatality was flight attendant C.B. Lansing, who was thrown from the plane when the roof tore away. The aftermath of the incident led to a thorough investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB. The investigation revealed that the plane had completed nearly 90,000 flight cycles, far exceeding the recommended service life of 75,000 cycles for short-haul aircraft. Over time, Constant pressurization and depressurization had weakened the fuselage, and cracks had formed in the lap joints, areas where aluminum sheets were bonded and riveted together. A combination of metal fatigue and corrosion, worsened by Hawaii's salty, humid climate, had caused the fuselage to fail catastrophically. The incident sent shockwaves through the aviation world. Aloha Airlines was criticized for inadequate maintenance, and Boeing faced scrutiny for using outdated bonding techniques in the early 737 models. This disaster highlighted the dangers of aging aircraft and led to significant changes in aviation safety standards. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, introduced the Aging Aircraft Safety Program requiring more rigorous inspections of older planes. New non-destructive testing methods, such as eddy current and ultrasonic testing, were also adopted to detect microscopic cracks that couldn't be seen with the naked eye. In the end, Flight 243's survival wasn't just a stroke of luck. It was a testament to the skill and quick thinking of the pilots, the resilience of the passengers, and oddly enough, the simplicity of one safety measure, seat belts. Many lives were saved simply because the passengers were still strapped in, a reminder of how critical those small, often overlooked details are. With that said, thanks for watching, and until next time, fly safe.